Good day, Strategy Gamers, and welcome back to episode two of our Let's Play series, Gary Grigsby's War in the West as the Allies. Uh, really excited to have this series kicked off and going. Just a reminder, it will release uh, every week on Fridays until we have more changes or we add new videos. We might mix up the order of the um, different videos, but for now, these will be releasing on Fridays every week. And really looking forward to get right back into this. I've uh, been having a lot of fun with War in the West uh, these last few weeks here. Uh, we were successful in turn one in our initial invasion of Sicily, and we followed a pretty historical uh, invasion pattern. As I mentioned, we probably won't follow historical patterns in terms of uh, invasion targets, uh, for example, where D-Day in Northern Europe is, or anything on Italy and, and stuff like that, will probably be a little different. We'll just try to evaluate the situation as is and make the best decision, because one of the things to remember, starting in July of 1943, the conditions of, say, June 1944, depending on what we do here now, might be very different than what the Allies faced when they made their decision to invade Normandy. Um... And same statement can be made for, you know, as the Italian campaign progresses, maybe it'll be a little different. Also, as a reminder, we're playing the fourth Supreme uh, Command scenario, which does really bolster the strength of the Axis. Uh, they have more uh, fuel and oil. Uh, they also have more of the uh, Africa Corps that survived. Um, and they also have some benefits to number of armaments produced because they cut back a little bit on the iterations that were constantly being made. So it's a pretty difficult force to, to get past. Um, but we're going to give it our best shot. So beginning turn two here with the air planning phase, and we're still going to begin with the automatic air directive creation, and then we'll tweak the decisions the AI has made to try to tailor it a little bit more to specifically what we want. So this uh, carried over from our last turn, and for the most part, we're going to keep things the same this turn because our priorities in the Mediterranean, very specifically, still need to be those that support the invasion of Sicily. And one of the things that's most important to me right now is I want to hamper their ferry movements across this strait, and I also want to interdict their forces as much as possible so that way... I can maybe try to catch more of them before they can retreat to mainland Italy. And interdict will stay pretty high for much of the early Italian campaign because we will want to tr try to cut off more of their forces in the kind of southern half of the, of the mainland of Italy. Um, and with that, it's going to be easier if we can interdict their forces more regularly. So that'll probably stay pretty high. Railways and ports we're going to keep low again. Um, and then in terms of Northern Europe, I'm, I'm really fine with everything that we have set there too. So we're just going to leave this as is. We're going to set AI directives. There it creates them all. AI manage air. And now we can go in and we can actually start looking at what they did and what changes we might want to make. So we see already that it's kind of moved more inland with the directives based off of our successful invasion here of the southern half of Sicily. So let's see. So this is the Strategic Air Force's ground attack, and this one is going to be targeting specifically airfields. You see how that's high and everything else is on ignore. And I think I'm going to leave this one... Well, let me see here. No, I'm going to change this. So we're going to set a new target. Wondering if I do something like, oh, I clicked the wrong thing there. Hex, that's what I wanted. We set this here. See here, now I can catch Cretone. Well, there's not really much there. Last recon set only 18 fighters. And I doubt they've moved that much there. There's a medium-sized um, airbase, though. So they might be mo moving more things there. But overall, one thing I know for sure is we can probably cut down on the size of our operations here uh, it, in terms of this grid that it's operating in. You know, I'm, I'm going to cut it down even further. We're just going to do... 
do four, I think. And then I'll move this hex to where it can capture. Well, no, I can't do four. I need to... I need to do six, it looks like. No, I can do five. I can do five and then I can adjust it down one. So there we go. So now we're capturing this airbase. This airbase, although last recon said there was nothing there. Here, here. Okay. So let's do that. Um, weather looks good over Sicily, by the way, so that's nice. I think, yeah, to the west here, we do have rain moving in, so that'll probably hit about turn three. And that's where we might look at some of these minimum fly weather conditions. But liking where this is sitting, so let's look at the others we have here. And I think I want to move these even more so uh, northeast. So let's take this recon. And let's move it up here, I think. So I can start to get some intel. I want to move it even further, I think. So what if we did here? I want to get intel. These air bases we're going to capture this turn. Yeah, I didn't think about that. We're going to redo the strategic air command because we're going to capture these air bases this turn, so we don't need to bomb them. So then with that in mind, we are going to move up our recon even further here then to get an idea of what's in this area. Yeah, I think that's the right call. Intensity is still going to be low because, again, we still have some pretty good intel and we're just kind of in a full sprint right now. Um, so we'll, we'll keep that at low and save our recon units or as more of them as we can for, for future attack or future, um, offensives. So let's maybe cut this down to three and then we can change the hex to right here. So then we capture these air bases. Yeah. And, and that'll just be the focus for the strategic ground attack. 19 fighters, 6 bombers there, 32 fighters there, so I think that's the right call. Now here we have ground attack, your superiority. So let's take the tactical air force and move their air superiority further north here. Because so we're going to have a lot of bombers going over in that area, and then we're going to take the ground attack and do the same thing. We're going to move them a little bit more north here. Because most of their forces now have already moved past these hexes. This is probably an Italian unit that's kind of an exception. I actually know it might be a German. Um, anyway, so we, we really want to focus our bombing in this area. And go up even one more, though. One more. Let's go here. There we go. Like that. Like that. We'll keep air superiority here with the Malta Air Command. Um, so the Malta Air Command, you can see we've got the, on the bottom of my screen, I can't move my mouse there, otherwise we'll lose the tooltip, but we've got uh, 48 Hurricanes, 12 Spitfires, 16 Kitty Hawks, and uh, 9 Spitfire VCs. So compare that to our ground, or excuse me, our ground attack tactic or no, superiority, sorry, tactical air force, we have 16 mosquitoes. Which that doesn't seem right that we're allocating those there, except it's a fighter bomber. So maybe the Malta Air Command is the one that I want to move up there. I think I had those two flipped in my head. So we're going to set them there, and that's fine. Okay, so we got a lot of overlap there, and that's going to be good. The routes that they're taking, I'm, yeah, overall happy enough with here. That's fine. Let's look in the north now, in Europe, and we see here we've got our strategic bomb city commands, right? Um, so these are actually the 8th U.S. Air Force, and then over here we have the RAF Bomber Command, um, and these are happening at night, right? So they're a little closer to home, too. Closer to our airfields, I should say. Uh, and then over here we have these units that are attacking... Um, our tactical air force, which is doing bombing runs on their airfields to try to hit their planes while they're still grounded. And really what I want to do is I want to try to, over attrition, try to force back their air bases here um, in occupied Netherlands, in occupied Belgium, 
I want to push back and make sure that their air forces are more centered in Germany. Um, so that way, they either have to travel further to intercept us in route to bombing, right? Or they have to be in the same area in which we're doing the bombings. Uh, or further behind and they spend more fuel, etc., etc. But what I don't want is I don't want them to have to do minimal flying to also intercept us before we even get to our bomb areas. So I'm going to move these further towards Belgium and the Netherlands, just need to find a target again. Recon is still a little old here. Probably work off this recon for another turn or two, and then we'll do some recon missions in this area. But I think this might be a good area. It's like here, I mean, this is 41 fighters in this air base. So if we just covered here um, between Eindhoven and München, uh, that would probably work pretty good, I think. Down here is another 27, so maybe I can even just get all of those air bases in one. So let's do this ground attack. Let's find a hex kind of in the middle there. Probably be this one. And then I'm going to need to expand the range by one, so we're going to go up to three. Now we have all of those covered. And then the recon, I think we will bring over there as well. We're going to keep it on low, though. Actually, no, I want my recon to go elsewhere. I'm going to send my recon here between uh, Utrecht and Inshida. Inshida? Yeah. I'm going to move it one more to the west, though. So then we also get the Amsterdam Air Base. So we can get some intel in these, and then maybe next turn end up bombing those. Uh, I'm going to keep this turn the larger area of operation for these bombing missions, I think. I'm not a big fan of <laughs> the 8th Air Force having to travel so far without their um, fighter escorts. Um, but we also do need to start hitting... Uh, some of this fuel production that they have up in this area. It's like when we look here at this bomb city, you can see with these little icons and hovering over them what they have in terms of oil and fuel production. And like here in Dolbergen, they have 30 oil production, 60 fuel production. We've barely damaged them at all. So I think we're going to keep this a little wider. Medium is good. During the day is fine. Yeah, so let's leave all that as is. And then I think we're going to end the air planning phase and execute those air directives. So we'll let that simulate. So far, 3,000 sorties, 130 losses. Most of the losses are air combat, probably a third of them there, it looks like, are flak. Okay. Operational staying low, which I'm happy about. Now look at the axis there, right? We're on day four right now, day five. No, day four, sorry. And they've had 27, no, sorry, 39 uh, airframes destroyed on the ground, right? So if you think about that, 39 airframes destroyed on the ground, if they were to run, say, five sorties a week, uh, that's 200 sorties that we've reduced their capacity by. And they never even got a chance to fly. They never got a chance to try to counter us. Now it's up to 70. So really, a third of all the Axis losses so far have been on the ground. I really like that. I'm a big fan of that. We'll see if that strategy pays off for us long term, but I, I think that's the way to go myself. Um, and we're going to end up with, say, 20,000 sorties to their 10,000, so just about double. Uh, that number will continue to go down a little bit because what we'll have to do is, as we get into the game here, um, our pilots will start to become fatigued, we'll start to have air wings that need more replacements, and all of these other factors. So we'll we'll start more of a rotation policy, and then that just means that the net total we have every week is just slightly lower. So here's kind of our summary of the air execution phase. We'll look at some highlights here. Uh, so you see the RAF lost 73 uh, in total. When we look at the damage they did, though, looks pretty significant here. So, like here in Cologne, 25 of their industry is now half damaged. 
resource production is almost fully damaged here in Duisburg. What are some other notable ones? Heavy industry here is half damaged. Manpower here, half damaged in Cleve. Dortmund was where the heavy industry was. So that, that is all really good news. And looks like, yeah, the losses were all in the bombers, of course. But they did manage to actually destroy a number of their fighters, too. And they may have been, they might have been operational losses, I suppose. But, yeah, okay, that's good stuff. Uh, looking down here, the Tactical Air Force lost 82. So that feels a little high to me. Um, and this is going to be in um, in Northern Europe, right? This isn't down in Sicily. But this was the ground attack on their airfields. So doing a lot of damage to the air bases as well. Here you see in this airfield... Five fighters lost, 11 fighters lost. Down here, one. Three bombers were lost here. Okay. Uh, of course, the 8th U.S. Air Force is going to take very heavy losses. Ended up doing 92% damage to oil production, 68-68 here in Mischberg and Nienhagen. Uh... 84% to the, the limited oil production here. So yeah, overall very effective. Um, and you know, we had some really high losses here, 277, right? But it's important to remember as well, uh, look at all these fighters they lost doing that too, right? Uh, so it did not come without cost to the Germans. Now, what's next? So let's take a look at... I mean, there's, there's not much to see here. This was just air superiority we were flying. Down here, we lost 46 with the Strategic Air Force in Sicily, and this is where we were doing air base damage. So again, you can see those values racking up in the number of... Yeah, so they, they were much more hard hit in um, Italy than in Northern Europe by our air base attacks, um, which is probably attributing to... I would assume two things, the Italian kind of quality of flak in AA and the Italian air superiority that they have there, would be my guess. Looking down further, lastly, we have this ground attack here, and th these are just all interdiction targets, right? So there's not too much detail to see here, but pretty successful. Okay, good stuff. We are now on our ground movement phase, and here we can actually do some some invasion work, if you will, as we plan our advance up through Sicily. We got some recon here of where they have their units moving to, so they haven't retreated and ferried across yet, but it does look like they'll have a lot of their forces escape, which I kind of expected given the scenario and, and given that historically there was a number that escaped. So I think first is, let's make sure we take uh, Katina. So I think what we'll do... I can't quite make it, can he? I'd like to take, yeah, like this special service brigade here, the first British. We're going to have them come up here and actually take the city. You see all their AA is surrendering as we move into the city. Good news. Over here, we're going to have the 5th British Infantry Division. I think we'll move up here and take this airfield. And we're going to go one step further here. Yeah, they're in very rough terrain, so they're going to be pretty defensible. Back here we have this British Infantry Brigade, so I'm just going to move them to kind of protect that flank. Don't think we can do an attack. Yeah, he's out. And the British were going to keep on this northern path. Uh, excuse me. We're, we're going to go on this northern path straight towards Messina, try to cut off the ferry with the British while the U.S. forces kind of wrap around and try to cut the island in half here. I think we'll have 50th come up here. 
first Canadian. I'm going to send here. We're going to attack this Italian unit. So we routed them. That's good. And lastly, we have the 51st British. Normally, I really hate expending all of our movement points, but this is going to be kind of frequent in some of these uh, early turns in the scenario because we really do want to try to cut off and advance as quickly as we can in some cases. So we are going to push just straight through to zero uh, movement points remaining. Over here, we see uh, the Italians are still kind of on the beach, if you will. I'd really like to try to do this Ranger Regiment to see if they can knock them up by themselves, but they don't even have... They do have two to one odds. Let's do it. We'll just attack with just them. Wasn't enough. They managed to hold. Let's attack again. Managed to hold again, my goodness. Okay, fine. Third U.S. Infantry will finish them off. All right, so one route at the other retreat it. And now we'll have the 3rd U.S. Infantry move along the coast here. You can move there. The 1st U.S. Infantry Division like to move north. Hmm. Go this way? Where can you make it to? I'm going to have you come up here. We're going to attack. Try to push them out even further. Okay. Yeah, so now I can take this guy up here. And again, we're just going to try to push north there as quickly as we can. All right. That's a little underwhelming there. Okay, uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, naval transport in some of my airborne units here. So let's take you over here. Yeah, not going to have enough to unload there. About you, you might. Yeah, there we go. That's good. Not enough to move anywhere, but that's fine. At least we got you over. Do the same thing here. Yep, that's enough again. Good. Gonna take the US 82nd over here then. Actually, can I build them up? Yeah, let's do that. And then we're gonna transport you. Bring you over here. Yeah, we need oh, nine more. Okay, but you'll be ready the next turn. So that's what we're going to bring up there. Okay, that's good. And then... Let's see. We're going to take the 56th Infantry Division here. And I might rail transport them over here, take them off the train. I'm going to take these two free French forces and move them down here as well. Oh, he used rail transport. That's why. There you go. So then we can have them in the port. And then when we're ready here, we're going to take these amphibious HQs and actually bring them over. Um... We'll bring them over to, to start prepping for an invasion on the mainland. So let's just look at some of our ports we got here. Those two aren't good for loading or prepping. Over here, uh, we are going to take our rail repair unit. We're going to move them down here. Yeah, they don't have enough either. So let's see, what else do we have over here? So we could use another unit in that port. This is another rail repair, so we're going to move them 
to Sicily. And move you here. There we go. Back to Northern Africa. So these are the units we brought over from um, England. You're probably switch you to be part of the 7th U.S. Army here. Let's just do that now. There you go, 7th U.S. Army. So then you're all together. Over here, I'm going to take the 5th Armor and have them get ready in that port. Then we're going to take... Oh, let's see, we have the 36, or excuse me, we have the 6 U.S. Corps. Uh, let's take you up here. Get off the train, probably. Yeah, so that's all good. All good there. Now let's see in England what we want to send in our next wave here we probably already had some prepped yes we're going to take this entire stack and send them to africa perfect oh no oh, one was unable to load the hq so can we maybe take them over here and load them in this port there we go problem solving it's fun and then let's take this, um, this is the 12th British Corps. We'll have them get ready to board up in Bristol next turn uh, to be ready to invade. And then we'll have this stack go after them. All right, so we're getting a bit of a backlog of units we'll bring over. And ultimately, I mean, by, these, by the time these guys arrive and such, they'll be uh, getting in reserve and ready to actually... Um, invade Italy not Sicily. Uh, Sicily hopefully by the time these guys get over there is pretty well under control. So I think we've got all of that done. don't think there's anything else I'd like to cover in the ground phase. So let's go ahead and just in turn and we'll see how this all simulates out. We of course have to first go through the logistics phase uh, for the Axis player and then Following that will be their air phase, much like how we have our own in that order. Then we'll see if there's any counterattacks or if they simply fall back more quickly. Um, I would expect them to still continue their retreat to Italy out of Sicily. However, given the scenario conditions, I don't know if because of the Africor, Africa Corps being evacuated, if the forces in Italy are so strong that perhaps they consider counterattacks um, against our push and maybe they hold out. A couple weeks longer than they did historically. I, I'm not sure what we'll see there. So here we're at their air phase. Uh, you can see it's a little closer to one-on-one, -on -one, one to one in terms of the number of sorties run, but you see now this vast difference in terms of the losses of airframes, uh, where pretty much they lost, I think it ended at 120 and we lost 30 or something like that. So it, it doesn't completely make it one to one by the time you simulate both sides turns, but it, it's up there. And it looks like maybe I left myself a little too open here, because I think this Italian unit is now moved down towards the beaches where our invasion was. Which maybe I should have considered. I'm trying to remember where that guy was. Is he over here? Interesting. Maybe he's coming up there to surrender. That's a possibility, right? But going through our logistics phase here, and then we'll get to go through the whole air directive uh, part again. And again, this should get us to about uh, two full turns per episode, which is going to feel really nice, uh, especially compared to some of the uh, War in the East episodes, which uh, we take two episodes per turn. <laughs> uh, so here we got our losses kind of equivalent to end of turn summary. Uh, Looking at it on the right, you see that the number of permanent losses were much fewer this turn. 
ours mostly came from our repeated assaults on those Italian forces with the U.S. Uh, army in the west of the island is really where we saw our losses. So not too much to speak to there. Uh, similar story here in terms of ground losses. Really the majority were vehicles that the Germans lost, likely due to our interdiction campaigns. And then we just had scattered losses across our forces. A lot of vehicles lost. I worry that a good chunk of those vehicles were lost by that Italian unit coming right up there to our line of supply. I, I worry that that happened and that would be... That's a significant number of vehicles. Um, also, those car cargo ship numbers are quite large, so I'm not sure quite what happened there. Air losses. Um, we see the numbers are much smaller uh, than they were in the previous turn. So in total, the Axis lost 145, we lost 100. And what I think is a little interesting here, right, and we'll see this trend probably throughout, but uh, pilots killed in action for the Axis 101. Western Allies, pilots killed in action 24. And pilots and their experience add up so quickly to be so meaningful in this game. It really is noteworthy. And then when we just look at these losses, right, it breaks it out by type. You see Lancaster B1s, B17 Fortresses, B24 Liberators being, of course, those most heavily hit. For the Germans, the JU-88As, um, the Z100, and this is an Italian airframe. Uh, same with the SM-79. I'm not really familiar with them, to be honest. JU-88A4s, HE-177, so kind of a mixture on the Axis side. Destroyed units is probably just going to be the uh, anti-air that we had captured in those cities, which makes sense. Let's close out of that, and now we look at our air directive creation. So I'm going to turn off amphib support in the south, okay? And I'm also going to cut back now on our interdiction to just low priority. Ferry we will keep high, uh, but now I'm going to switch to targeting... Uh, units and the reason for that is what we're going to start to run into in the next two or three turns is them using the hilly rough terrain in northern Sicily to really try to bog us down and keep us there for a couple turns before we can cross through the straits. So we're going to start to get into this point where they're a little bit entrenched and we really have to fight our way through. Um, so any help that we can get from our uh, air force and our air superiority towards that end. I'm going to be going after. We will continue, though, with our strategic forces. Um, sorry, I'm looking over at the wrong, wrong side here. With our strategic forces, we're still going to target in the south airfields. Our tactical forces in North Europe will keep with the airfields again. It's a strategy I kind of believe in. We'll see if it pays out. Oil and fuel, we're going to keep those ratios for now, and manpower we'll keep doing at night. So let's set up those air directives. and then AI Manage Air. We can close out of that. And again, we've got that rain coming in, but it looks like for our operations over Sicily and the, the, the flight paths to Sicily should be fine. So I'm not really worried about that. Here, we're going to change this again. Uh, it's the uh, Air Force bombing. Jeez, of course it's the Air Force bombing. It is our strategic Air Force hitting their airfields is what I wanted to say there. I think we can take this even one smaller down to two, I think. Nope, we need three. Only three will work to get both. Okay. We don't have any air base recon. Last recon was on turn two, and you see that they have 64 fighters, 23 bombers here, 12 fighters up here. Okay. So they're still maintaining forces there. Do they? Yes, we haven't had any recon there since turn one. So I, I would anticipate that they've evac'd all of their um, air assets out of these western air bases. That'd be my expectation from them. And then we're going to take this recon again move it a little bit more this direction. That's good. Ground attack. Uh, 
again want to move it up here to where we're really going to be having the concentration of their defensive line. And then our air superiority, we will move the multi air command a little bit closer to this air base where they have their concentration of fighters. So this is what our air directives look like here now. Ah, uh, this Italian unit. That drives me insane that I missed that. That's probably how we lost the vehicles, I'd bet. Oh boy, okay. Looking to the north, you see the AI now has changed a little bit where they now have the eighth, or excuse me, they now have the RAF bombing north here near Hamburg, uh, which is a, a new mission. And then we see here in the south, RAF is also going after uh, Saarbrücken, uh, which is in France. And I'm not sure I agree with that one. Um, because this is the night mission targeting manpower. I don't necessarily know that I want to target French manpower there. I think what I would rather do is change this hex further north around Dusseldorf and Dortmund. I had this happen last time once. Okay, I didn't click the city the first time. That must be what it was. There we go. And then this way, too, he still keeps his um, his fighter escort by targeting that, which I think is important. And we're going to have some overlap there, which I think is fine. But what I am going to do is actually... Yeah, I'm going to decrease the range. I don't like how big that is, considering we're just trying to target these couple of German cities here, not necessarily the Dutch cities. Yeah, we'll keep it here. That's fine. I was thinking about moving it further down. Here, let's change you to five. That's good, I think. Do we want to bomb Hamburg? I think is one of the questions. And this is going to be manpower at night, probably. I think that makes sense. Also, with this flight path, we're going to have... Um, We're going to change it so that way we fly even less over Friesland, which is in northern Netherlands. Here we go. And then I'm going to see. So this is probably trying to avoid that, that air base, because that's a large air base. It's actually coming from the north. I think that makes more sense. But now I'm just looking at it and remembering it's raining all over Europe here. Hmm. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. Try to cut down on... I don't know if I want to run anything in the rain like that. Let's see if we look at our um, weather report, what we see here. Weather air. Yeah, and that's heavy rain. That's not light rain either. I don't know, guys. I think I might scrap these. I'm going to scrap the northern directives um, for this turn. I don't want to be doing that. We certainly could. I mean, I, I want to put that out there, right? It's it's not a black and white decision. Uh, we could still run it, uh, but let let's let's take this turn to to rest a little. So we're gonna cancel those, and then over here we had the tactical air force we do the same thing. Okay, sorry for zooming out there. So far, it was not intentional. But now we've got all the air directives covered. In the med, we don't have that rain yet, so we're going to be able to continue here. So, given that, do I maybe take like this ground attack, and I'm going to change the intensity to high? Yeah. And then let's do the si Now we'll keep that as is. That's fine. Okay. So let's go ahead and execute that for our air directives. See how this plays out. 
operational losses, we already have 22. And I mean, we're not even flying at all in Northern Europe, so it, yeah, I should be looking at that in terms of weather. Um, but we do see that on the ground, 34 airframes, again, halfway through, almost the week's done, I suppose. 34 airframes destroyed on the ground. They've lost 50 operationally. It was pretty one-to-one -one in terms of losses here because we don't have that strategic bombing going on in Northern Europe. So really the thing to look at here is like, let's look at our tactical air force. Um, these were the uh, ground attack um, missions. And you see here, right, like we had this interdict, but we also uh, took out, looks like 19 men or squads, one gun, no armor here, six, one gun. Yeah, that's something that adds up. And we also had the interdiction values um, and their rail usage. So I think that's all really good, really good news to be positive about. Up here we had our bombing of their air bases. Good, 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 good. Like seeing those results. So we're in our ground movement phase here. Uh, we're going to take these guys off the ship and kick the Italian little, that just drives me insane that they got up there like that. Uh, <laughs> sorry, now we'll take that British core. I'm gonna have them move this direction right to join up with the rest of the British forces. The US Ranger uh, regiment uh, can come up here. We'll have them advance north just to the east of the 1st U.S. Infantry Division. And the 1st is going to go all the way north to now cut off the island in half here. They probably got most everything out from the western pocket, but we've now got that cut off. And then here we're going to start working our way up along the coast road. All right, so we captured that town. All the flak is now surrendering. And then this U.S. Airborne, I'm going to move them north here. Uh, this is the rail repair. Do they have any movement? This turn they do. So have this guy go north to repair. Can't do it this turn though. And then here we have this British Airborne Division, which I'm going to use to come south. Just make sure we establish and take over these lines here. The next turn we'll go north there. This airborne division. Let's have you come up here. This rail repair. Good. So you, we can come up here. And this guy is going to right away focus on getting the rails repaired north to these forces. Special Services Unit will move north here. Now you see we've already made contact. We'll move up the 50th British Infantry Division here. Nine should be enough to kind of dissuade any type of counterattack. Right, moving these guys north. Actually going to move them a little bit west there. Take you up here. There we go. Already moved you. I think we've got all of our units in Sicily all moved now. Oh, no, sorry, he can go one more further. There we go. Okay. There is that. And now we're going to take our amphib units and move them back to start planning, uh, well, the <laughs> next invasion. So I'm going to take off this unit and going to move you back here to this port. Down here, take off the second British Special Service. 
bring you here. Okay. Just getting all of this sorted. Let's have the armor division come off. Perfect. Over here, the Canadian unit will come off, I think. Here, we'll take the Canadian unit off. Just picking on the Canadians, I guess. And here, we'll take the HQ off. So then we need to get these Amphib HQs back here to these ports. Okay. And then we can start looking at where do we want to invade Italy. I don't know that they're going to have enough port capacity for an actual assault. That just being 13. Is there another port that perhaps I missed? We're at 40 here. Let's do it here. That makes more sense. Yeah, that makes more sense. Then you can come all the way over here. All right. So, let's take a look at Italy. Where do we want to invade? Um, so obviously it'd be really exciting to just invade here and go straight for Rome. That does get a little difficult though. And the further north we go, the more attrition we might suffer and the more naval air interdiction they can run against us, um, blocking our path even sometimes. So that's not good. So we really do have to look at going maybe a little bit lower in the boot, I feel. This is an area where I am not an expert on where to choose for this destination of the invasion. Um, but what always catches my eye here is you've got these ports right here just north of Naples. And I feel like this is really advantageous if you can get in here because you can use some of this rough terrain then uh, to defend your beachhead with. And then when you're going towards Rome, you don't have to slog through all of this mountain and rough terrain. You can start to go through. There are a couple of swamp hexes here, but you can go south here of Rome. And this is a very clear terrain to go through. I guess there's also an option of do we maybe look at going right here to invade and just bypass that entirely. Because the counterpoint to, yes, the rough terrain makes it easier to defend your beachhead, uh, it also means that when they put their units in the rough terrain, it is much harder to push out of your beachhead. So maybe this is the answer, to do it in here. I hate going that far north, though. I mean, that is quite the distance. Um, yeah, right, wrong, or indifferent, this is what we're going to try. We're going to try to invade right here along Rome just to the west of Rome. And we're, we're going to see how that goes. So let's now start taking our um, amphib stacks and let's start targeting. So here we have the British infantry divisions. I think we can probably have them come south here. So that'll be their invasion target. Here we will go north to Lada de Roma. I hope I'm saying that right. I need to get units there. So we're going to take this armored division. I'm going to take that HQ off, move up that mountain regiment. These guys are going to be a little weaker. So I think I'm going to set them kind of in between these two forces. There we go. This stack is 5th British Corps. 
Let's maybe have them go. Hmm. Go right here. Okay. And here we start to get into some of the U.S. forces. Want to target with them a little more north, I think. Boy, this is so far up here north. Let's have them attack here because there's this port, and taking the port is just so important. Because then you don't rely upon supplies and reinforcements coming in through your amphibious HQ. You actually have a port to unload your supplies in. And then the rest of the 7th U.S. Army will support that more northern um, beachhead. Should you do it right in between here? Kind of like that idea. Instead of doing it right next to it. But I probably get some bonuses if I do it right next to that invasion too. Now, you know, I'm going to try to cut them in the middle here. And this is going to be our invasion pattern. Six, six landing points all to the west of Rome. It's going to be tough, guys. It's going to be very tough. Uh, very tough indeed. Now here we've got all these guys taken care of. I've already checked that. We can go up here to England, and we're going to, from Bristol, bring in our next wave of reinforcements. And then I think what I'll do is I'll use this port here to start bringing over... Um, Yeah, we'll start bringing over some of these guys. That's just a little too far. We can go right here, though. Oh, didn't have enough to load it, so I could only bring one of them. So we're going to have to wait another turn for the next one. We'll bring both of you into that port. We'll use this port for shipping out of units. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, let's uh let's end turn here. I think we're being very aggressive with our amphibious landing point. I really do. Um but I also just that one of the reasons that I am being a little more aggressive, and this is this is very different from like my 1941 War in the East campaign in terms of my aggressiveness. But one of the things that I keep thinking about is, you know, it was really tough for the Allies to move north up through Italy because of a lot of the terrain and just the once the Germans came down to really reinforce, it was very difficult going for them. Um, I can only imagine it's going to be much more difficult with this scenario, given that there is a much stronger force there in Italy and that they're not going to be as constrained by their fuel production and uh, they'll be producing more armaments than they would have in the historical situation. Uh, so I feel like I do need to be a little more aggressive. And my my hope here is, right, that this is the advantage the attacker has versus the defenders. The defender has to try to figure out a way to defend. Oh, we're actually being attacked here in Sicily. Okay, but we held. They're attacking a second time. Still held. This is 33,000 men against our 20,000. We're in open terrain, so that's not great. But they're Italian forces that are pretty weak. So if it would have been the, um, the Panzer divisions that are there, that would have been very difficult for us. But what I was getting at is the defender has to try to defend all possible landing points, right? And I'm hopeful that maybe they're not as defended in the north, and that even if they are, they should theoretically be spread out pretty evenly across that island. And if we can just right away, though, cut off Rome and work our way north from there, one, we're going to trap so many units in the south of Italy. Uh, two, um... I think it would really open up the possibility for us to have, again, kind of this alternate proceeding of, you know, maybe we can push out of Italy, right? Something that really never materialized for the Allies because it was just trying to create another front to, to focus the Germans' attention away from Northern Europe. 
Um, but maybe we have a chance of doing that if we're successful with a closer to Rome landing. Uh, losses this turn were a little higher, right? Axis lost 637. We lost 14, or excuse me, 1100. Uh, you can see here 19 vehicles for the Axis. They lost the uh, machine gun units, mortar units, rifle squads. And then for us, yep, we had rifle squads as well. Not see anything too big. Vehicles, we lost another 600 of. Cargo ships, we lost 35. So my best guess here is that a lot of these vehicle losses are coming from the cargo ships, and the cargo ships are being sunk um, in the med by their naval interdiction. That's my best guess there. Air losses, 92 for the Axis, 61 for us, so again, much lower. Level bombers were only 18 for us. Big part of that is our holding off in Northern Europe because of the um, weather conditions. Um, hopefully next turn we're able to go at it quite a bit harder. Turn three here, see that they lost more flak in A. Makes sense. And that, that really kind of brings us to a close here for episode two of the series, guys. Thank you so much for following along in your support. Really excited to have another Gary Grigsby title on the channel. Uh, you got any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave them down below. Would love to hear from you, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And as always, Strategic Gamers, hoping you have yourselves an excellent day. Bye now.